What's up? All right, so basically here is the final product. It is pretty, pretty good. I thought, I thought um, it turned out pretty good. Um, took me about three weeks of just studying pictures of the Air Jordan one in the specific colorway. And I obsessed over this shoe basically. What I wanted to do was achieve the 85 shape. I just used my current Air Jordans right here. These are a pair of Chicago Customs, originally bread toes. I would just tape off the whole shoe with some masking tape to get the pattern of the shoe I need. And so that way I get the exact size of the sneaker for um, what I need. And then I would use reference photos tweaking each shape and everything. This is the way I did it without actually having to deconstruct the sneaker. Like for instance the collar, it's a little different from what you'd see on this shoe because there's more of a slight curve to the top piece and then on the 85 it's more straight. Um, every bit of this shoe was kind of altered. So I would use my iPad as like a light table in a way and then take a reference photo, kind of scale it to the size of an actual sneaker by putting them next to each other. And then I would put something on called um, guided access and that allows um, me to touch the screen without my fingers like moving it and everything. I would trace the shape pretty much, alter it because it would be a 3D photo and so to make it flat, I would take the actual shape of this one and then kind of merge the two, but make it look more like the original. To, for the leather, I spent way too much time online looking for flat white, like pure white leather. And that was one of the hardest things because I didn't want, I didn't want to spend like 120, 140 bucks on like a whole cowhide. So I ended up going to a bunch of leather boutiques online. Some of them were closed after I ordered the pieces because of um, the coronavirus, but I found one uh, on eBay and I ended up getting a half a cowhide for like 80 bucks, which is a lot, but it's like spending the amount of money on a new, like regular pair of retros. So this is it. Um, it's completely flat, pretty thin, not as thick as I wanted it to be, but I don't know if the thickness would have uh, helped when I was sewing the sneaker. My sewing machine broke. Um, coincidentally like right before I started so I had to use my grandmother's old singer I don't know if I can I'll bring it in I use my grandma's old singer complete beast um I had to hand spin the wheel every stitch because it was the motor inside is not strong enough to pierce the leather and I was using a like leather needle for it so it should it should be a little easier but pretty much for the entire upper. I was too impatient to wait for the bobbin case for my like more and modern sewing machine. So for this one, I, I was like, I'm gonna take the time and just push, like hold the little thing here and then push it through each stitch. So I did a couple samples beforehand, which I can show. So this was the first try. To get, I, this is just some scrap leathers I found. Did some pen markings. So this was a fail, still tried it. Then after that I did this shoe, kind of got closer to the actual thing. I added the foam collar and tried experimenting with stuff like that. Testing another one. This one doesn't really, I don't know what I was doing because it kind of went off on a tangent. I made a corduroy one, <laughs> some old Nike socks with the swoosh on the collar. Um, yeah, I tried to use the 85 shape for this, but the material's just different, so it, it doesn't stretch in the same way when I was trying to last it. This is the first attempt. I didn't like these because something was off. I don't know what, but also was using Sharpie and I got it on the edges and tried to remove it with acetone, but that didn't work. So I started over. <laughs> but after cutting out each shape, I have to like add a backing so it's sturdy enough for parts like this and uh, this, the eyelets, I used some just stabilizer, some fuse kind of thing. I used glue, shoe glue, to temporarily like piece the, all the panels together. That way I can stitch with confidence without having to worry that the sewing machine will stretch or like 
shift the leather so it sits perfectly fine. And if you can see on the collar here, to achieve, um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but on the 85 pair, it's like a foam with a vinyl coating over it and it's always cracking and to get the best look that resembles that, I used the other side of the leather, so the suede part, and then painted that over with um, Angel's paint. And that, I think, turned out pretty well. I'm pretty satisfied with the back. Um, I did the same thing with the swooshes. When I referenced photos, um, there were two different textures than the leather. Also, the swoosh is a slightly lighter color than the collar, and that's due to aging and different different pairs age differently. So when I'm looking at all these images of the same sneaker, they're all different. So I was like, which one am I gonna pick from? And um, I kind of just ended up taking what I liked and stuck with it. Yeah, so when I was gonna use for the collar, the inside, I used this foam piece. It's like a upholstery foam or something. I don't know if you can see, one side is foam and the other is this gray material. I got it off Etsy for like 10 bucks or something. It's a huge roll. It's not the same matching gray, but it's aged. It's an aged look, so I got away with that. I'm saying I'm getting away with all this crap, but really, it's just not perfect. But <laughs> I'm totally a perfectionist and it does kind of bug me, but it's like a way for me to say, nah, you good. My friend Greg, he helped me out with some vinyl, sticker, uh, vinyl prints. So, 85s used to have the sizing on the inside collar. And on this pair right here that I made, when school was open, I was like screen printing all the time and I just made the size tag just like that. The, the OGs I'm pretty sure were screen printed. So it's, you don't feel it, it's all smooth and everything. So wish I could do that, but due to the circumstances, vinyl prints work just fine. Ironed that on. It says nine and a half, my shoe size, and then my birth date, where it's supposed to be the production year. And then MX for max, but it's supposed to be like TY2 or something for Taiwan or something. Factory code. The tongue, I used Peller Fuse or something. It, it's a foam with two fusible sides. I had to fuse on this like satin material that it, all the materials were pretty close. I tried to make as close to like a regular retro. So this one's more of a tighter knit than this one, than this tongue, but kind of gets the look down. And then I took the same material and stitched it as the liner here. I made the tongue slightly taller because OGs were slightly taller. If you compare this one, it kind of ends at the collar. And so, that's small detail. There's a bunch of details I feel like nobody's ever gonna give a shit about except for the people who are like obsessed. So, if you guys notice any of the details on this shoe, I appreciate it because they're all thought out. Okay, so the Wings logo. I had to hand paint this because the vinyl stickers that my friend helped make they just didn't work. I put them on and then when I peeled it off, it brought the paint with it because I didn't prep the surface, which is a really rookie move for customizing sneakers this long. I don't know why I didn't think of that, but uh, it, it would have been hard to get the exact shape and line, uh, alignment, use acetone to prep the surface remove that and then put on the stencil in the exact spot. I didn't want to mess with the leather because I didn't want to ruin the finish because painting over would not really match and so then I'd have a weird looking custom. Punched out the holes. I tried to make it as close to the OG by um, using uh, Illustrator again to make points where each hole was on like a picture that had the picture of the toe box. This right here is the last. If you've never heard of a last before, it's pretty much the shape of your foot mixed with the shape of the shoe. Fit perfectly together and then you stretch the upper over this. This is what attaches at the end. My lasts are pretty shitty. Because I have to take the last out before I put it to the sole because I tried it the first time 
by putting on the upper to the sole with the last in it and I couldn't get this out and usually you're supposed to do because it gets the perfect shape but there's no way to bend it and on a regular pair you're supposed to be able to bend it and the reason why I didn't buy a pair of Air Jordan 1 lasts was because they're expensive I'm on a budget <laughs> I didn't want to spend like $400 on patterns and um, lasts and materials and all that it would have added up so basically I went to Home Depot got two planks um, boards of wood and kind of just made my own shape this took a while it's pretty janks but I really tried to get the shape right by sanding it and carving it with like all the equipment at school definitely I think one of the hardest parts to making this shoe oh yeah for the heel counter to make it stiff I used Tupperware some Tupperware lids sanded each end and then cut out the sides that need to be in. it's actually pretty good, firm definitely could use because it sticks out a little there and a little detail that I would have switched if I um why didn't I switch that but I yeah no I didn't have enough to waste oh for the sole donors I found these on Poshmark for 20 bucks yeah so basically here it is if I missed anything I missed something but it worked out in the end, so definitely check out the B-roll shots next. It's a brand new bed, it's a brand new bed.